with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling the transmission. Oh boy, what is glitch art? Glitch art is intentionally corrupting technology to make art. Strapping a magnet to an old TV, tricking a computer into thinking an image is a sound. It's a lot of tech-based art that's about destruction and kind of chaos, but giving a little order to it sometimes. Oh, whoa, yeah. Um, this is my grandmother's house. She passed away about two decades ago. I grew up here and at my mom's house across the street in Woodlake, Minnesota. But then I also spent every summer in Malibu, California, with my dad, going from a town of 300 to Los Angeles being 3 million. It was kind of a large culture shock for me in a lot of ways. I made art an actual intention for my life in about 2015 when I got accepted for a glitch art exhibit in Krakow, Poland. It was awesome, it was so cool. Meeting a lot of people, most of our community is only online. We have a community of about like 80,000 people. It's like a Facebook group and we just kind of like talk about different techniques and stuff. So a lot of these people have known from around the world, but none of us had ever met each other in person for like years. And then finally there met a lot of those people. For me, glitch art is, it's kind of a way to deal with mental sort of things. Life can feel sort of chaotic or anxious or something. You're getting a moment of chaos, but you're giving it some sort of definition. Working in glitch art a lot got me into a lot of general forms of digital art. I think my brain is just so kind of all over, but then when I'm just sitting in Photoshop and kind of zoomed up to the pixel, it's like, you know, it's a sort of meditative practice just to be able to kind of like, okay, all I gotta do is just cut out this dude's leg and I can just do that for an hour. And it's like, there's a little moment of like peace, sort of, which is nice. Beyond individual artistic works that I do, I do a lot of live performance too, a lot of DJing and live video work. Dragon Burlesque for me, we're kind of doing those shows were my bread and butter for live events a lot of times. I worked in, I DJ at gay bars, most weekends for like half a decade, burlesque shows too. I would actually play with video effects as if they were, you know, like an instrument or something. People could actually kind of see, you know, the feedback moving, like in tune with break dancers or something like that. So a lot of the things that I do are dependent on large groups of people. If I was 20 years old trying to be a DJ out here, it'd be very difficult. But so much of sort of society and connectedness through internet has changed. And so seeing a lot of people, especially, you know, in their 30s and 40s, starting to kind of look for a slower pace of life, but they still enjoy a lot of city life. And we're able to kind of slowly build out some of the things that we enjoyed from the city out here, but without kind of like coming in and being like, okay, we're only listening to techno for eight hours straight. Rural life is a very complicated thing. I love it. Uh, it can also be painful and isolating at times. I'm really passionate about the beauty of the prairie because oftentimes people will come out here and they're saying, I'm going to the woods because so often they're used to going to Duluth or Northern Minnesota, uh, which are all beautiful places. But the beauty of the prairie is really a slow burn.
the beauty of marrying someone else who is an outrageously talented artist and professional is we both understand when we need space, but then we're also very aware of when we need someone else to be with. And because sometimes you get lost and you need, you know, uh, your partner there to help you through and, and be like, hey, you're doing okay. <laughs> I, I see it. So that's why I love Jesse Hannon. <laughs> Come here. Come on, Ed. Don't dilly dally. Get up here. Okay. Uh, there it is. I guess one of the things I love living on the farm most, partly because I do so many different things, a lot of times it feels like a canvas to work with. You know, we can build a bar in this old building. We can make a stage here. I can mow in this pattern and it looks kind of cool. I also really love the pace of life. You know, some of the stress of being like, I wake up, I gotta go right now and do this and do that and do it. Uh, there's still work, but it's a little more relaxing at times instead of waking up next to a freeway, which I was for a while. <laughs> Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Juline on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota, a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota. On the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram. Online at 96.7cram.com. <laughs>